Well, I'm in here editing video, and I hear a bunch of noise outside, so I think Heidi's out here working her butt off, because she can't sit still. <laughs> what have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. What's up, hoser? Oh, I forgot about those hoses. <laughs> That's all I'm using. That's all you're going to use? That's all I have. Oh. Oh my word, these are all the little extensions yeah. in case we only need a few more feet <laughs> uh, for whatever reason. They're kind of leftovers also. So, you can see what she's doing. Making it shiny. I'm telling you, we haven't washed this. When's the last time it was washed? Like a while. Before we got to Ohio? Uh, we did a... Or maybe we did one after. On the way to Florida? No. The first time? No? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You sure? I don't know. I don't know either. It's been a while. But nonetheless, it's needed it badly. I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen a shine for a while. We we uh, kind of avoid the blue beacon, but we go to the blue beacon and we needed to go, unfortunately. So how far did you get up here? Just to the just to the rock with this side the no I had to stop here, so far my hose is breached. Ooh, you should have just went to the inside and got the blue hose. Well, it's out, but I mean I could still do it, but Nice. I still we'll have to put the slides in for me to get the top. Uh, I ain't worried about that. So the thing that we've got to be concerned with, uh, which I won't do today because she got it all wet. Well, actually I could if you haven't done the other side yet. No, I'm getting ready to do just the side that's... I should um, maybe go underneath and take a look at what the uh, thing does there. See our bike rack? Uh, you can see our bike rack. <laughs> yeah, I could go underneath and uh, look to see what the uh, blue boy, our blue boy's underneath. Remember I had it ratchet strapped up there? Well, we caught a, a, a piece of tire, a gator tread, and it popped it loose. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's hanging kind of low there. It caught that axle and popped it out of its socket. Yeah, it popped the axle out over there. It just it just shifted it all. I mean, think about how many miles it's been on here for. Not that many. Well, what do you mean not that many? Yeah, how many freaking miles do you think we've gone since then? <laughs> So let's lower it and see what it looks like. Here's what happened was whenever it got hit by that piece of tread at 70 miles an hour, it bent the rim. Um, yeah, it bent the rim and uh, it pulled it out of its axle spot, which that, I'm pretty sure just pops back in again there. I'll have to see if I can straighten the axle maybe, oops. But yeah, yeah, that's that's basically what happened. Uh, here we go. Not looking good. Well, Let's I know what it needs to be. What you're supposed to do is pull the ends off of this, yeah. slide the axle through it. But I don't. I can't really. I mean, I can do it, but the problem is. is these caps down here are just one-time push-on caps, and they're real hard to recover. So it looks like that it's kind of wanting to go back on. And then hold in the other side. And hold the 
axle tires not gonna do any good. That's the problem. All right, let me hammer this thing on without busting off the valve stem cap, and hopefully uh, we'll be back in business. Don't hold, don't hit it too hard. I'm holding. Gonna it. work. Okay. It's got to be held. So. Okay. Lots of tools. It's fixed. Let's get it still bent. Look at it. Wobble, wobble, wobble. He'll still do the job. The only reason we keep this. I'll be honest with you, there's only one reason, actually two. It gives us the ability to go to a park that maybe don't have full hookups, which we never schedule that. Uh, and it also lets us keep one reservation on file, one out of the thousand trail system, and that's Peace River, because not all their sites have full hookups. And they say, oh, well, we got this honey wagon that comes around. I'm not a big fan of those things because they suck the crap out of your RV. They suck it out of the tanks. Well, the tank is sealed. So unless you're inside and you've got your foot on the valve and you got it open, it's sucking through the roof vent. Uh... I bet it smells real good when they do that. I don't know. Well, it's taking it out, but it's... So, if anything, it's extracting all the smell and pulling in through all the seals. I don't like that at all. I don't like honey wagons. Um, it'd be one thing if they put it on a real low pump pressure and they would allow you to pull the dump and let it empty into their hose and then they would turn on the vacuum and, and you know, pull it out of their hose, but I don't think that's the way it works. could be wrong, but I doubt it. Um... So this would allow us to make runs on our own to the dump station. Again, all this time, we had this in the, the uh, front of the travel trailer. You can see how much space it takes up. I mean, this is a 42 gallon tank. It's a big tank. So we had it in the front of the RV uh, in the travel trailer. We did have it in the front of this trailer and we have plenty of room for it. And the trailer thing is we don't want to waste our, that. Now the thing that I don't care for and you can ask Heidi, I talk about it all the time. If you guys have this, don't take offense, but I don't think I want to put my crap tank on my ladder on the back of the RV and let everybody see. I don't care what color it is, how nice it is or nothing. If it's not covered up to where it just looks like something underneath a, a cover, I really don't want my blue tank, my black tank, my brown tank, my orange tank, I don't care what it is, on my ladder. Um, the other thing is the ladder is only handle 300 pounds and I see people that's got ladders, kayaks, bicep fronts of bikes, um, they're blue boys, I get all kinds of stuff hooked up to it so. It's back up, I think it's actually back up tighter than what it was before. Um, it moved around a little bit, I was kind of surprised by that but oh <laughs> I see because the side of it's dented up against the tire this time. Before, I think I had it up closer to the front. Well, we'll have to see. I mean, if we drive down the road and all of a sudden the, we hear a big kathump, <laughs> we, it's in there pretty tight though. Um, so far, it's been the best way to carry this thing for sure. Well, here we are at the beach. Talk to Michael into taking me to the beach. Yeah, I went to get a haircut and we was riding the bikes, which you see up there. And, uh, yeah, Heidi said, let's go to the beach. We're almost there anyways, which I guess we kind of were. We were just closer to the causeway. But if you guys go back and check out our video, the last time we were down here with, I think, the electric bikes, there was a drop-off that I actually filmed Heidi stepping yeah. down, almost falling, <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyways, for whatever reason, that's gone. It has to do most likely with that storm, I'm sure, that... You know, all Ian. The shells are gone. Yeah, all the shells are gone. Well, they're here. But... <laughs> yeah, they're hidden deep. But yeah, look how calm it is out there. That's probably the calmest I've seen it in a in a great distance on this side in a long time. All right, checking in. We got to ride their bikes back eventually. And it's pretty warm today. What's the temperature today? Uh, Eighty-four. Eighty-four. That seems about right. That seems about right. So, 85. 85. 
Beautiful. We do love it down here. We keep on shopping for houses elsewhere. <laughs> and every time we do, we're like, yeah, but can we get away from this? <laughs> Probably not. Found out that during our hideaway from the hurricane, at some point we lost the cover uh, for the end of the, the awning. I have no idea how. Um, I think Heidi was probably uh, doing gymnastics and trying to hang off it or something like that. And she pulled it off. <laughs> I, I doubt that. Uh, but yeah, it was missing. Um, and we looked at our, our clips when we were in Zephyr Hills, when we stopped on our way back at Zephyr Hills. And it was still on the awning at that point in time. Um, funny thing is there was no remnants of screws or anything in there, which is odd. So picked up a new cover from Amazon. Of course, it was just a few days, uh, pretty inexpensive. I think it might've been like $22. Um, you just got to make sure you buy one that's for a power awning, the correct one. And there is a hole that's in the front or in the front of the awning, um, cover that's for the manual override in case your motor uh, quits on you whenever it's out and you need to manually retract it. They, it doesn't come with a plug. It doesn't come with the rubber plug to fill that. So uh, seeing how the awning uh, arms are dark, we just took uh, a black piece of a turnabond because we have black a turnabond and we uh, put it over that and you can really hardly notice it unless you look up at it. And even then it just looks like there's a square up there. You're not sure why, but it was easy to do. It actually clips on uh, with a couple of clips, and then there's two screws to hold it on uh, permanently. I think, personally, that they never put the screws in because I don't see how it could have come off. And even if it broke off, the screws should have still been there, but they weren't. But the job was pretty easy, like I said, and um, just a matter of getting me the you know getting the ladder out and doing it, and I'm finished with that. And you can hear that hail hitting. Look at the wind. Man, that's some hard stuff. Uh, I don't think it's very big. It's just no, it's not big. It's um, mm, about pinky fingernail size. So it's bigger than P, bigger than P size hail, but uh, no, I don't think dime. But it's pretty good, pretty heavy hail here. That guy's real big tall tree over there is crooked. Yeah, it's been like that. I never really noticed it. There's some wind over in those trees real far away. Well, there goes Davy Tree. Well, the water's coming off this RV in all different places. This stream of water is coming from the slide awning topper. Must be overloaded. And then the rain's coming off the roof. So it's coming out of the gutter, but most of it's not. This is one of the other reasons why we um, got out of here during the hurricane. Because you can see what happens. I mean, this will go away. It's just not going away right now so it's all trying to go out that little drain that's out by that gate and it's like this throughout the park in various places but you see even over here it's all flooded but this is pretty normal during really heavy rains so could you imagine the the uh, hurricane again this is why we hooked up and left a little bit of a surprise last night 
not surprising that it snowed in some places, but the intensity of the snow and the fact that it stuck and caused, unfortunately, some slippery roads and quite a few accidents in the middle of the night last night. This is mostly around and north of Interstate 80, up into Trumbull and Mercer counties. A one inch plus amount is pretty common, including around Slippery Rock, heading over towards Hermitage, Pulaski, over towards Vienna, uh, Cortland, especially just south of Cortland, and then uh, back towards Warren as well. Officially at Youngstown Warren Airport, 1.5 inches of snow in the middle of the night last night. If you live in our southern viewing area, you're saying snow, what snow? And that's why we don't live in Ohio anymore. Thank you, October. Oh no, we're blocked in. They're, they're doing some uh, sealing of the road here at the park. So it, it looks like they're doing the edges. The so truck will be blocked in for about three days. Two and a half days. But it looks like they're uh, sealing the edges, I guess. But I'll, I'll pick it up here in a little bit whenever they get around the corner. Looks like they're a little bit behind for the day. It should have been done earlier, but... So today is, what, Tuesday. And they're doing our section. But... So it looks like it's sticky. Now they're going up there to spray it. You seen how they sprayed this out here? I'm gonna tell you that I'm no expert on this crap, but in Ohio, whenever we redo our driveways, uh, the asphalt driveways, which I've helped with on quite a few different occasions, other people that had asphalt driveways. There's a way of doing it that makes it last a little longer. So the first thing you do is you pour the stuff in all the cracks. You know, you just pour it in. You have a little can and you dip it and then you pour it, you know, on, on all the cracks. Then what you're supposed to do is take and basically pour it out on the ground and spread it with a brush. You know or or a, a squeegee um, it's kind of a combination of things some of them can be a real short uh, bristle brush or uh, you know a squeegee um, so I don't know if you can tell on camera I, I'm sure you can't but there's a huge difference between what's right in front of our driveway apron here and what's out in the middle of the road and the difference is they spray I swear it's almost like spray paint they hold that sprayer so far off the road that they just they just put a they basically just change the color of the rock instead of doing a seal job like they do close to aprons and entrances um, so again I know this don't probably come, come out on camera but like from what's in front of me here uh, so far out you can see it's like uh, a two foot wide black stripe that's because they brushed that on. Then it's sprayed, and then there's another brush spot, and then it's sprayed. All the stuff in the middle is sprayed. I have no idea what, I'll tell you, this isn't the way I've ever seen it done anywhere else but here. And I don't know if it's because they're just trying to get as much as they can out of the material by putting it on thin uh, or what, but you can see, it, Right now, this whole street should look as shiny as the shiniest spot out there. And it's not because it's just the way they're putting it on. I, mm, I'll tell you what, if I was paying for this, nope, 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 nope. It's not the way I want it done. All right. But I'm not paying for it, or am I? I mean, are the residents paying for that? You know, if the rent goes up because they're going to get the streets taken care of, a little bit more maintenance done on the park, uh, did they just pay for that? <laughs> I don't know. But we're all kind of trapped here. I mean, uh, literally, we can't walk um, to anywhere. The, the neighbors across the street there, they're here from Utah. They're originally from New York. 
but they have a, um, a rental company. What do you call those things? Side-by-side -side rental company and snowmobiles and cabin rentals out in Duck Creek, Utah, that area. And uh, they're taking a break. They had to help move his mom who lives down in the southern part of Florida. Um, but yeah, they this is their maiden voyage with their their uh, holiday rambler. It's, I, I'll be honest with you. It's got like 60,000 miles on it. Um, it's all right. It's nice. Um, it's a diesel. Uh, runs pretty good, so he says. But it's older. It's very clean inside. So we're going to uh, leave the asphalt to the it smells experts. Good out here, don't it? Yeah, it's got a great smell. Oh, look, Heidi's on TV. <laughs> Short hair. Yeah, from October 6th. And there's her foot for some reason. What year? That's funny. I don't know. What, what year's your foot there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got to go back to work. I'm editing videos. One of the things that we like to do is come up to Sebastian. It's a beautiful place. And rent uh, these little uh, cabins by the river. Uh, this is Captain Hiram's. We've done this before. Let's see, it's pretty nice here. Um, just a, a king room, but it's got a great view. See the bar down there, the restaurants underneath of us. And then we have our own balcony and you can watch all these people bringing in fish, which there's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. A, a laundry basket. Full. And the laundry basket about this wide, and they're all that, about that big. And he has some more fish that are all He's getting ready to clean them all. <laughs> so you can see why we like to come to this place. It's always really nice. Um, as far as the bar down there, we're going to hear music all night long, I'm sure, because that's the stage. And if you watched our previous videos, we stayed right around the corner at the other one that has about the same kind of balcony. But yeah, we. We enjoy coming down here. It's Heidi's birthday, so everybody tell Heidi happy birthday. And <laughs> we will uh, enjoy ourselves. But we wanted to tell you that uh, this is a place you may want to check out at some point in time. Um, well, that door's awful thick. Big TV, beautiful. It's really nice and cool in here. Um, but basically, there's only four rooms up top here. You can see here. One of them is a storage room, but we were in that room over there. Um, and that's a shared room. That number five, that's, that's something else. But this goes downstairs to the, uh, to the restaurant. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 